I always uh, try to pick them up at the uh, airport mm -hmm. and then um, uh, we sit in the back of a car and, and we drive uh, to the center of Beijing. Mm -hmm. And then if the Westerner will start commenting on, uh, ah, that's very dangerous. He drives wrong. He mm -hmm. should do this. He should do that. I know is he, this is not my client, you know, yeah. I will, I will, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing this. So, yeah, let, maybe let's uh, start a little bit. Also, I'm not 100% sure. Um, what is your current position and what is your interest in EU-China relations? And also, where are you at the moment? Are you in Belgium? Are you in China? Tell me a little bit or tell also our viewers a little bit about yourself. Okay, so I'm a scholar and a practitioner in law. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, as a scholar, I, uh, I write books and I teach. And I do that. Um, my, my home university is Leiden University in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I also teach at other universities and attend their uh, courses and their conferences. And uh, my Chinese home base is uh, Tsinghua in Beijing, um, and I, I teach there, and I you know I I I, I join the people there, um, and then as a practitioner, uh, I uh, I work from The Hague in Holland, where I am now, and um, uh, The Hague is of course a a very um, international city with a lot of legal institutes mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, we we've been that since more than a hundred years, of course. So it's very embedded in our culture. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, I uh, uh, I before I I traveled regularly to China. Of course, mm -hmm. this year everything has been different. And uh, uh, so uh, uh, I I also try to take all the COVID measures. Uh, very seriously, mm -hmm. uh, so I don't uh, do any travel that is not strictly necessary, and I don't travel uh, to other countries. We have uh, specific uh, measures mm -hmm. in the legal practice that make it possible to, uh, for instance, execute documents that normally you would have to execute in front of uh, each other or in front of the notary, but now you can do it online. Okay. Um, so. That's very helpful. The Dutch, Dutch legal system is very practical in that way. Mm -hmm. And this also makes it possible, of course, that uh, people can stay at home and work from there and that there's less uh, risk of uh, any uh, infections. Yeah. Okay. So um, just a short question. Could you also execute documents uh, concerning China? So you wouldn't have to go to China, for example? How does it work? Indeed. Indeed. Oh. So if, for instance, a um, uh, Chinese company wants to transfer uh, shares in a Dutch company mm -hmm. and it needs to be done in front of a small official like myself with uh, seals and stamps, then normally they, I, I would have to meet them and I would mm -hmm. have to meet them in Holland. Yes. They would have to come to Holland because I wouldn't be able to do this service in China, not even mm -hmm. in the Dutch embassy. But now, uh, because of these special measures, I can do it online. So okay. that is really very helpful. Mm -hmm. It certainly it saves it, a lot yeah. of time and uh, resources. Absolutely. And um, of course, you have to have your KYC uh, in order, your know your client mm -hmm. file so that you, you don't do that for strangers, of course. Yes. But if they are serious business and if, if they have this urgent transaction, it's uh, it's very good that you can help them and that you don't have to you know, that, that they don't get lost in, into this um, uh, system whereby you cannot travel, you cannot do this and you cannot do that. Okay, wow. That's really interesting. So what is, uh, to, to start with the interview, what is your insight about the intercontinental legal structures and the cooperation situation between the EU and Chinese partners? You already said um, during Corona, there were certain like flexibilities also that you just mentioned. Tell us about the most important developments in your field of expertise in the last year. There are there are two contrary uh, streams actually. So mm -hmm. the one is the the more practical one that I was referring to uh, a minute ago, and that people are trying 
uh, to uh, facilitate uh, business and investments to go on. Mm -hmm. And the other stream is opposite. It's um, uh, uh, a lot of it is uh, OECD uh, rules mm -hmm. um, concerning um, officially money laundering and uh, uh, drugs related uh, 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 money. Mm -hmm. uh, but in fact, they are also they are also in 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 reality um, rules that make it more difficult for uh, Chinese companies to. Uh, invest in the way they want in mm -hmm. uh, Europe. So okay. these rules make it more difficult for banks to open bank accounts, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, banks are more vulnerable for uh, very high penalties, mm -hmm. like going into hundreds and millions of uh, euros. Okay. Um, and um, therefore, like we had uh, two Dutch banks in the last few years that were punished for uh, these reasons in intercontinental transactions mm -hmm. and they got fines of more than half a billion each wow. and um, in uh, in practice what they do now is they simply cut out um, a lot of China business so they 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 write letters to their individual Chinese clients mm -hmm. saying ah you know we've been looking at your file but we think we cannot continue our relationship and uh, um, so that's the contrary. So it's, it's very confusing because mm -hmm. on the one hand, uh, uh, international uh, business is being facilitated and on the other hand, it's being slowed down. Okay. And uh, I'm not sure I understand from which part is it being slowed down. So if you say that the, the banks have to pay uh, like fines or something, is that a Chinese regulation or a European no. EU regulation? EU and uh, uh, especially also US. Okay. So the US will impose uh, regulations also on European banks. Mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, we, yeah, the, the, it, it's OECD is um, an international organization. Yeah. Uh, it's um, US and Australia plus EU, you know, taking it broadly. Mm -hmm. uh, not China, uh, not Russia, mm -hmm. um, and uh, the rules. These, these, most of these rules are uh, come from OECD standards. Okay. And then they are uh, put into uh, either EU regulations that are further uh, written down into national laws, mm -hmm. uh, or they become US laws. Okay. Um, and and in this way. This is the, the, you know, that that's the other stream. Mm -hmm. that, that's the other current. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. I didn't know that uh, from the European side we had, or from, from the OECD side, we have this kind of development. Uh, what developments do you see from the Chinese side on the legal base? Is, is China for more forthcoming or also are they also following their economic decoupling a little bit? I ha have heard that maybe there is also something like a legal like let's say building up a little bit of uh, like distance between China and Europe is that also what you have uh, experienced or no on the contrary from the Chinese side I think that the uh, Chinese are working very hard to uh, um, to, to have their legal system embedded in the like in the international uh, rule of law Mm -hmm. And then uh, it's it's uh, maybe it's a bit technical, but you've got basically you've got in in the world you've got two systems of law, mm -hmm. you've got the common law and you've got the civil law, and then the the common law is uh, England and America, and the civil law is like continental Europe, mm -hmm. and then China has always had a civil law, mm -hmm. and they are further. Mm, working on their civil law and they they produced a wonderful civil code last years and uh, you know they're they're working very hard to to have this uh codification mm -hmm. of their of their rules in in proper uh codes mm -hmm. and um of course this is really different from the american system so for an american lawyer it seems that china is you know uh becoming a stranger to uh, the legal system 
But then it's the legal system in the US that they're becoming a stranger to, not the legal mm -hmm. system in the world. But, you know, lawyers are often very, even if they think they're broad minded or international, but in, in reality, we lawyers are, are, are very small town people that only think, you know, so far, and we are used mm -hmm. to our own customs and our own laws. And if something is different, we, we immediately shout that it's wrong or that it's, and that's what's happening here as well. Mm -hmm. So from an American lawyer point of view, uh, China is uh, uh, becoming, is drifting further away from US, mm -hmm. but that's only, it's, it's because China is em embedding into the rule of law their, their systems that they, uh, that they already had. Okay. So from our perspective, we could say that Chinese law is becoming more transparent. If you enter into the rule of law, for, from the EU perspective, it would be beneficial, right? Did I get it right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Maybe uh, six years ago, I, I gave a speech in the European Parliament in Brussels mm -hmm. on this topic, like um, EU law and China law. Mm -hmm. And that it would be great for EU if uh, China law would develop in, into their proper uh, uh, civil uh, civil law tradition, mm -hmm. because it it would it would be more parallel to the uh, European situation. Mm -hmm. And if the two legal systems are aligned, of course, it's easier to do business. Yes, definitely. So from from your perspective, from the legal perspective. Um, this trend of more self-reliance and less openness in, in Chinese politics and economy is not reflected on the legal level. It would more be like uh, suited for, for example, initiatives like the Belt and Road Initiative, where you need more openness and a, a clo like a, a coming closer to the civil law that you have in other uh, participating countries, right? Yes, and then of course the complexity in the Belt and Road uh, Initiative is that you've got very different legal systems along the road. Mm -hmm. So it's not, you know, it's 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 it really varies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we can see that the Chinese government or uh, is making steps uh, to approach at least because if I get it right, adopting or trying to fit into civil law makes it easier for other nations also to, um, to like uh, grasp your law. I mean, of course we have the US system where you just have a lawyer for everything, but then for most of the nations, especially on the European continent and on the European Asian land bridge, they're more rule of law based, right? So for them, it's getting easier or is that what we can read from this development? Absolutely. I think the uh, the origins of the uh, uh, civil law system is that we wanted to codify the law so that for everybody, also for normal people or for middle class people, it would be clear what the law is. And you yeah. wouldn't have to go to, to some upper class specialist to uh, give him a, a big sum of money and then hope that you would get a, a proper answer. Yeah. So... Uh, uh, indeed, it's it's one of the earliest examples of trying to be transparent. These codes, and it goes it goes a, a long way back to the uh, to the ancient Romans, to Justinianus. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so it's you know, and and it's about transparency, indeed, mm -hmm. and that's what that's what I appreciate uh, about the um, developments in uh, in China law. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's becoming more transparent. If you write it down, it's more okay. clear. Okay, that's really, really interesting because, yeah, we have a bit different, different uh, like impressions of the, uh, the development in China. But knowing that from the legal perspective, they do try to approach or make it more transparent because I am thinking in general, my interviews and my articles are for yeah, small and medium sized enterprises or maybe also smaller, large sized enterprises. They won't have I don't know, uh, huge amounts of money for lawyers to settle every single detail. So for them, this is improving the situation a lot. I'm thinking about logistics uh, companies along the uh, uh, way of the um, Belt and Road Initiative, for example, or I don't know, just enterprises along the way. For them, it will make life a lot easier if that trend continues. 
Klopt. Ja, yeah, correct. Ja, yeah, very right. Thank you.